So about four years ago, my husband and our daughter, who was 20 at the time, sat down at dinner, and we were going to go head to the movies. So we finished dinner, we were putting the dishes away, and my daughter stops and looks at us and says, Mom and Dad, I've got something to tell you. And she takes this deep breath and awkwardly stretched, which I don't know why I remember, and said, I'm gay, and I've known since eighth grade. And I'm going to tell you in that moment, it just kind of feels like time has slowed down, and you notice things. And it was probably, at the most, two seconds. But I could see her face. I could see her nervousness. I could see how she was handing us her heart, trying to give us this secret part of herself. And I promise you, it was no more than two seconds. And we were hugging her and telling her that we love her and that we, we love her unconditionally. But I found myself a little choked up because I said, <laughs> Since eighth grade? Like, you've been holding this in since eighth grade? And the mother in me was just kind of ripped apart because I kept picturing my little eighth grade daughter up in that bedroom, looking up at the ceiling and holding on to a secret that she thought was something that she had to hide, that was maybe something she was ashamed of. And it, it broke my heart. So I said, you know, did you not feel safe to come out? Did you? Did you not understand that your sister works for the H Human Rights Campaign, which is essentially gay rights? And I'm the Gay Straight Alliance sponsor at the high school. And she goes, I know. I'm, I mean, you guys, I felt you would be cool, but I just was so chicken. I wanted to do it by my 18th birthday. And then that happened. And then my 19th birthday. And then my 20th birthday. And then she kind of stopped and looked at me and said, you're the GSA sponsor? And I laughed and thought, well, kids don't really know what you do. And also, I clearly needed to be a louder LGBTQ advocate or gay advocate for our youth. So my daughter was kind of strategic. She had called her older sisters that day, had come out to them, gotten lots of advice about what to say, what not to say, came out to her friends after us, and then basically said, hey, you know, I'm leaving next week for our, my study abroad. And when I come back at the end of the semester, you know, It'll be all right if you've already told everyone. Like, tell everyone. So I did my job. I was like, anyone and everyone. I just met you in the grocery store. I'm going to tell you about my daughter. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? How can you hate this? But her friends were funny because she told them, and they were surprised, but they were just like, really? OK. And it was a little bit like, like if someone you knew always had long hair, and then one day they came in and boop, had cut it super short. And you're surprised, but then you're like, also cool. And that's what they treated it like, like no big deal. They were miserable at spreading the news like gossip. They did not at all. So my daughter had nothing but great experiences. But I know for a fact that that is not the case for all of our gay youth. And so that is my motivation for being here tonight. Because I would like to talk about how we all can change mindsets and how we all can make a difference. And we'll get to that in just a bit. My name, once again, is Janet Anderson. And I have been a teacher librarian at Barrington High School for the last 13 and a half years. And I want to be clear, I'm not speaking on behalf of Barrington District 220. I am simply a teacher who adores her job. I get to talk to students who love books about stories, and I get to try to expand what they are reading and give them new ideas. I get to talk to students who think that they don't like to read anymore and keep supplying them with story and book after story until they find that one, that one book that makes them realize, ah, I don't not like reading. I just don't like reading when someone tells me I have to read something. I get to work with every level of English student throughout the building as they have book study groups. And kids can have this posture of not caring. And these kids are leaning in and are passionately talking about books. And I don't know if you know this about librarians, but we are on a mission so that we want students to see themselves in books. We want students to find themselves in books. And we encourage teachers to make sure that when they teach, they are including the important stories of people of every race, every gender, and every sexual orientation. Because we believe it is vital that students see themselves as they are learning and encoding in their brain what is right and what is correct. 
I think that the poet, Adrienne Rich, had said it best when she had said that when someone with the authority of a teacher, say, describes the world and you're not in it, there's this moment of psychological disequilibrium as though you have looked into a mirror and saw nothing. We don't want our children to not see themselves. So that is why I'm here. Six years ago, before I knew my daughter was gay, before anything, I went to a conference. And at that conference, I found out some pretty sad statistics. I found out that I know that suicide is the leading cause of death for youth between the ages of 10 and 24. But if you are gay, you are five times likely to attempt suicide. If your parents and your family did not accept you when you come out, you are eight times as likely to attempt suicide. I want you to think about that for a second, eight times more likely. So it was getting a little bit depressing at that moment. But then he shared one more slide and said, if there is one supportive adult in your life, you are 40% less likely to attempt suicide. And that one person doesn't have to be a parent. It can be a teacher. And I thought to myself, it can be a librarian. And I'm telling you, it can be you. So our world is not made for gay people. In fact, it is a majority of straight people. There are 15 million estimated gay populations in America right now, and that is not even 5% of America. However, we also have a lot of left-handed people, and they will tell you that the world is not made for them either. But here's the difference. Left-handed and right-handed, there is no stigma. But when you are gay, there is not only stigma, there is sometimes hatred. There is sometimes visceral hatred. So, that is why we have celebrations. We have something called National Coming Out Day. And that just happened a few weeks ago on October 11th. And that is when people all over the world are getting their guts together and like my daughter, come out to their people. And here's the thing, I didn't have to do that because you are presumed to be straight. But everyone thinks, well, they came out. They're done, but they're not done. If you come out in high school, you are presumed straight again in college. You have to come out again. You are presumed straight at your first job. You have to come out again. It's, it is a process going over and over. And it is not easy. And it's something that I think that the Russian violinist who risked his life to come out has said, and his name is Artem Kolsov. Look him up online. Amazing coming out process. But his quote was, we don't come out for the heterosexuals to know. We don't come out for the people who hate us to know. We shout and we make as much noise as possible just so that other people like us who are scared and who can't be themselves would know that they are not a mistake and that they are not alone. And I want you to know that when you are not ready to come out, you should not come out and you should stay safe where you are and we will make as much noise and we will do all that we can to support you and to keep you safe. But how do we make that noise? How do we make people feel safe? Do we run for public office? Do we change public policy? Do we go to marches? Do we write articles and get them published? I mean, that would be awesome, but what if we started with reading diverse books? Reading books about black people, brown people, gay people, by black people, brown people, and gay people. By reading, we are changing mindsets, and that is data driven. Dr. Chopak from Michigan had said that reading fiction can influence how we relate to others in the real world. And fiction stories, they do a lot of things for us. They allow us to expose these uncomfortable ideas and they provide us with a safe place to take these other people's perspectives in, an, in a somewhat distanced way. And in that way, I like when he says, it serves as a playground for exercising empathetic skills. So reading is a literal empathetic machine. So reading for enjoyment is the number one 
proven time and time again way to have your students and your children get better scores. I don't really care about their scores as a score, but I want you to know it is. Let them read for fun. Let them read for enjoyment. Let them read what they want to read, and they're going to be able to have a broader vocabulary. They're going to build up a stamina. They're going to also, while they are doing these things, walk in the shoes of other people, be exposed to cultures that they weren't aware of, grow, their minds were open, their hearts were open, and what do we want? Do we want kids with high scores graduating our schools, or do we want kids who are empathetic with other human beings graduating our schools? And wow, we can have both. So we at Barrington High School, decided to have a book club. And in that book club, it was with faculty members and staff members. And we did it through every lunch period on one day. And the book we had picked was by Meredith Rosso. And it was, If I Was Your Girl. And it is about Amanda, who has just gotten picked up by her father. They are driving awkwardly back to his house. And it's awkward because it has been six years since they've seen each other. And the last time Amanda saw her father, her name was Andrew. And Amanda just left her high school where she was severely beaten for being in the wrong bathroom. And she's had to leave her school where it's no longer safe for her to attend to finish her senior year at a different high school. This book was mind opening. People had so many questions that they didn't know they had until they saw what was in this book. Books have a way of taking all these questions and answering them for you, and the discussions were so rich. After this, we had a course that I proposed for summer, and the district asked me at spring break time if we could add some more anxiety and stress type of books and offer it over spring break, and it was fantastic. People read about people who were depressed, people who have anxiety, ways to get around it. They read about people who were black, people who were brown, people who were gay, and it was very powerful. So then this summer, we expanded it even to a larger number of books and a larger group of teachers in the district. And in total, we had over 90 teachers reading on average 10 to 12 books this summer. And what they wrote back was that you know who's in your seats. And you think you know they're all unique. But until you have read all these books about all these different cultures, you did not know the connections you could be making with them. And books are the vehicle that give you that connection. This is the power of books. This is how we will change mindsets. We are going to encourage each other to be reading. We are going to encourage each other to stretch and to read things we would not normally read. And to visually represent this, author Joan Bauer said that when she went to a park with her husband, they had handed out sparklers. And everyone in that park had a sparkler. And as it grew to be darker and it was completely dark, the first sparkler was lit. And one by one by one, all of the other people's sparklers were lit until it became a sea of lights. And this is what we can do with books. We can spread that light, we can make that difference, and we can change those mindsets. I love the quote by Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who said, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. And I think we can do this one book at a time. And I think we should get started. Thank you so much.